Yes, Mr. Singh, I mean, how do you, or how did you, or how are you refueling a state which everybody had really sort of given up hope on? Well, it's true that Bihar had increasingly become a butt of joke, regarded in more serious con conversation as a basket case, with little hope, uh, with uh, pessimism all over, with despondency, a state uh, reputed for terrible state of law and order, collapse of institutions, declining growth rates, in some years even uh, declining per capita incomes, far from per capita, per capita incomes going up. I think Mr. Nitish Kumar has done four critical things. First and foremost, is recognized that there is no substitute to improved governance. And the first attribute of improved governance is a vastly improved uh, environment of security, law and order. So that's one. The second important factor is improving the infrastructure in the state, particularly a massive road building program. Yes, there were no roads in Bihar. There were yes. no roads, a yes. massive road building program, rural roads. Uh, in addition to the national highways, we have improved state highways, district roads, rural roads. This has enabled a vast amount of urban activity in smaller towns, apart from the big towns. And therefore, the momentum gathered from this has reflected in the third factor, the increasing use of technology. You, Bihar is the fastest growing market of cell phones. And it's not only because the cell phone owners are making money, everybody is making money. The farmers want to know the price of potatoes, uh, the price of tomatoes, uh, the yields for their fish, and so on. There's a whole slew of activity which has come around the use of technology, the penetration of IT in Bihar's rural economy. And fourth, which is not unimportant, a whole slew of administrative reforms, including important legislation, which he enacted in the early years of his government, while the honeymoon still lasted. A whole slew of them, like abolition of the Urban Land Sealing Act, abolition of the Agricultural Produce Marketing Act, which enabled greater freedom to farmers. So a combination of measures focusing on improved governance has seen this dramatic change of a 3.5% rate of growth converted to an average of 11.03%, with growth all over, with industry surprisingly growing at 22%, construction sector at 40%, and the services sector, of course, being an enabling factor. There are two important challenges. We'll be able to sustain this momentum into translating Bihar into a manufacturing hub and an education hub. Manufacturing hub because of the pros prospect of labor available, a second important competitive factor advantage of a demographic advantage of a large number of people, uh, particularly young people, wanting to take educational, look to educational opportunities, and whether we can harness that by setting up educational institutions in the state, along with vocational training, in which we are able to synergize the two comparative advantages that Bihar has, fertile land and fertile people. Bihar has always had talented people. It's always had brainy people in that sense. It has always had intellect. To revitalize that intellect, what is the key injection that government policy must give? In my view, three things. First, I think continue to do what we have done. We'll be surprised to know that we have appointed 200,000 primary teachers. It's not easy to appoint 200,000 primary teachers. Where do you find them? Sure. Where do you train them? But we have to be able to reduce the gender gap 50% of these 200,000 are women. And I think that has improved substantially the quality of primary education on the higher and secondary education. Combine that with a program of vocational training. And the third is higher education in terms of the, we now are going to have an institute of technology. We have an R.A. Bharti University in terms of various areas of science technologies, giving in incentives for setting up engineering colleges, setting up, for instance, management institutes. Combine that with one big brand which is coming up, the Nalanda University. I'm privileged to be a part of that mentor group. Once this bill is enacted in parliament, all the foundations would have been laid for setting up this university, which in terms of nostalgia, represented the intellectual power, not only of Bihar, of India, but of Asia in general. Right. In fact, Professor Amartya Sen, uh, concluding the second mentor group, had a profound statement to make that in the very week that Nalanda was being burnt, Oxford was being inaugurated, what did this represent? Perhaps a transition of intellectual power from Asia to intellectual power in Europe. And to that extent, Nalanda symbolizes not only nostalgia, 
it symbolizes the reassertion of India as an intellectual powerhouse of the world. That's a wonderful anecdote, uh, Mr. Singh. Let me ask you, uh, therefore, a question that people want to ask. When, a bi when the last bipoles happened and your party didn't do as well, your detractors went back and said, social engineering wins. Why does that happen then in your mind? How is it that it, with a chief minister and a party that clearly is doing remarkably well and is doing key projects to push a state, there can still be a by-election where you don't do well months after you've done great work? Certainly possible, because I think that do not take the voter psychology for granted. But I think the broad principle remains of our firm belief to replace social engineering with economic engineering. A belief that if anything can break against the stratified society or Bihar is stratified by caste, by class, by communal divides, it is the matrix of economic progress and development cutting across these centuries of important economic divides. And the fact that we are due for an election in the state, by November we will have a new government, this election will be an important test case of whether economic development can really cut across the traditional divides and my party is able to receive a mandate which I believe it deserves on its development record to be able to complete the unfinished agenda of Mr. Nitish Kumar's first term in office.